Well, we're finally here, back at the plot. The rain has subsided, the water has gone. We are here, the sun's out. Although I'm hiding in the polytunnel at the moment, I am here to get a few jobs done today whilst the weather is night. We've got stuff going on outside, I've got stuff to build, I've got stuff to plant, but we'll come to that in a minute. The first job is, and you might be able to see it blown about in the wind, we've got a little bit of a situation at the back of the polytunnel here, and there's a bit of a, a, bit of a hole developed, and I've sort of patched it up over the past sort of six months or so to try and keep on top of it but with the weather we've had recently with the high winds and all that sort of stuff it's kind of developed into a big chasm and it couldn't be in a more awkward place quite frankly it is right where it joins the door frame that's where it's ripped and it's got to be stretched across and it folds at the end of the polytunnel so you put sort of wrinkles in it so it's really awkward but we have something so ian from grown local recommended to get some of this this is extra wide polytunnel repair tape it was a few quid i'm not going to lie i think it was about 30 35 quid for this roll but if it does a job fixes that which is gonna be awkward it'll be all right it'll be marvelous so let's go over there let's have a little look and see how we're gonna fix this so this isn't part of the allotment you see very often we're tucked away right down here at the end of the plot behind the polytunnel and there's a, i'm very aware that if you can see there's a giant bee buzzing about in here so i'm very aware that it is nearby but anyway let me bring you over here and have a look at this so here's the tear and you can see i've had to peel back this part of the door and sort of take the nails out which isn't ideal so originally when it was built the cover gets stretched all the way over here under the door this gets nailed in keeps it in place a bit like this one on this side let's have a look at this side and we'll compare it see all the way down here you can see that's nailed in nice and tight jobs are good and over here over time whatever reason it's got hit by the wind whatever it's ripped it out of here and you can see it's really awkward it really jaggy all the way along here and it needs fixed and the problem is it doesn't stretch over here too well when we originally put this cover on it was just really really tight really really stretched so i'm thinking the tape if i can get it here without blowing in the wind i'm gonna get the tape all the way down here bit of an overhang on the edge tape on the back tape on the front trap it in here fasten this in jobs are good but let's see let's see if it'll work we'll have a look again from the inside you can see it here as well so i've sort of had a bit of a, a bodge fix here over time and there's that bee look at the bee up there you see it buzzing about that's why i'm a bit, a bit paranoid about it because it's massive but we'll get it fixed up we'll see how we do i'll get the tape on we'll get it nailed in i'll come back we'll see how it's looking before we get on with the next set of projects right progress is being made at last so let me let me show you where i am with this so it looks a bit messy at the moment over time it will look better so we've taped all of the song here in the end i stripped the button off all the way down to the bottom the button did split and i was a bit worried but i'm okay because if we have a quick look up here we've got spare buttons at the top of the top of the polytunnel here remember never throw anything like that out always keep it you never know when you might need it in a situation like this so it's been double taped so we've got tape down this side on the inside we've got exactly the same on the outside and speaking of the outside let's just pop out the door and take a look and you can see it down here now these white splodges this is gorilla glue so i did have some gorilla glue to try a different fix but i've combined the super strong tape and the Gorilla Glue, just to double it up. And even now, I don't know if you can see it, it's just moving ever so slightly in the wind. And I had a big, there was a big fold in here and I fixed the big fold. So I've sort of taped down the big fold and it's just gonna stop it moving in the wind. And if we can stop the movement, it'll stop it pulling as much on the baton where the sort of polytunnel, where the plastic is dug into the baton with the nails. Hopefully if we stop that pulling on that, it'll stop it from breaking again. Speaking of which, I need to put the button on. The other, other thing, let me show you this. Look, I managed to use the glue. I don't know if you can see it there, but I managed to glue my jumper. So I'm not overly impressed with that. That's, that's a bit rubbish. Polytunnel fix, good. Giant bee buzzing about inside the polytunnel. Not sure. Glue on the jumper, a bit rubbish. Not to worry. I'm going to get a new button nailed on there. I'll show, well, I'll show you at the end how things look. I've got another two jobs to do. We're going to go and build some obelisks and we're going to build some arches. That's a much more fun job than fixing a polytunnel. So I will be back with you in just a jiffy. So that's one job ticked off the list. On to the next one. So what have I got here? Garden obelisk. And let me, let me just come up and show you that there. So why have I got this? So I was, I was thinking about what to do with my sweet peas, what to do with my squash. Now I've got three arches down there to build as well. 
that the squash are going to go. I've said before, squash are going to go vertical this year, so we're going to go over the arches. And I thought I was going to do arches for the sweet peas as well, and I was wondering where am I going to put them out there, where they're going to be, what they're going to do, and I just couldn't quite come up with it. Now, I was watching Steve over on the Digwell Greenfingers channel the other day, and he had obelisks, and I saw them, and I was like, that's just what I need. And I'm sorry. There's still a giant bee buzzing about over there. So this, is, this is probably an hour on from when I stopped the camera before I stopped. I had my lunch. I had a ham salad roll and it was in a Scottish morning roll and not wanting to start off any sort of great debate. But you know what? The Scottish morning roll, there's, do you get better bread than that? I mean, I grew up in and around Newcastle, way, home of the Stotty Cake, which is absolutely tremendous. But the Scottish morning roll, that's oh, it's, it's tough to beat, you know, but... Garden obelisk. So I've, I've already built one, so I've got two of them. I've already built one and we'll we'll go and have a look. I would yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna not gonna film myself building these. It took about, I don't know, 20 minutes there about. I, I've got these off Amazon. I'll chuck a link in the description down below. Same as the arches, the glue, stuff like that, all that sort of stuff. I always put links down below. You can go and have a look at them. But we'll just get the the bits out. So just to show you there, it comes like this, there's all the different pieces. And the instructions here, it doesn't take too much putting together. There you go, you can see the instructions. There's only a few different parts. There's a nut and bolt that joins it, so where the loops go around the obelisk, the sort of two vertical bits joined together, the hoop goes around, you put the bolt through the, through the leg, through the hoop, put the nut on it, turn it up, job is a gun. And it's a lovely sort of like pointy bit at the top with the hoop in it that looks lovely, but I'm doing a little bit extra with them, bit extra with them, because so last year I bought an arch and I did the sweet peas up the arch and we had a bit of a problem with it and it's these cheap sort of manufactured ones and you have Amazon that sort of come. It was only, you'd be lucky if they're 10 quid each, but a bit of an issue. It rusted through, rusted through in a few places and it fell over and it, it is down the bottom of the lot. I need to take it away, I need to take the recycling centre, get rid of it. But let's go down, have a look and see what I've been up to with them. And just when you think everything's going well, it starts to rain and why is that a problem well let me let me spin you around so i've got the obelisks here we'll have a we'll have a look at them there we go they look a little bit wonky don't worry about that when they're outside in the ground from the ground they'll be straightened up they'll look lovely so the it's a bit tricky to see them in here with all the stuff but we will go outside once the rain stopped and i've got out there and i've got them sorted and we'll get the sweet peas planted in and around them they look good but the bit i wanted to show you it's just mainly in and around here, so where the joins are. So the bits at the top overlap the bits at the bottom, and the bits on the left overlap the bits on the right, and then they all join together with one sort of nut and bolt through there. And what happened with the arches is it rusted around these areas here, around the joints. So what I've done, if I grab it over here, let me show you this. We've got some of this hammerite direct to rust metal plant satin black and all the joints including the legs right at the bottom have all had a good spray with this and speaking of the legs at the bottom before I put them in so all the way down here where it's going to go into the ground and we'll see how far it comes up but it'll not be it'll not be far off where this first uh, first hoop is here I'm going to cover all that in the black plastic sort of it's got some bin bags I'm going to cut up and use the black plastic we'll get all that sealed up so the bit that's going to go on the ground all be covered in plastic just to protect that bottom bit the legs it's going to go into the ground so they're going to be wet pretty much all the time just to protect them from the moisture so that actually sounds like the rain might have stopped so without further ado let's head outside so finally finally outside and getting things planted out after a, a couple of false starts with the rain and whatnot but we are here you might be able to see you might not but we'll have a look right at the end other obelisk over there, all planted up. Other one here, it's maybe a bit wonky. They're a bit difficult to get in the ground and get level, but once all the sweet peas and things are growing up them, honestly, you'll never, you'll never even know. So I've dug a little hole there with a hori hori, a bit of blood fish and bone. We'll go in here, we've got our sweet peas that are, you know, that they're beyond needing planted out. And they're, they're grown in these big, long, deep root trainers. And I'll try and, let's just try and pick pick this one out let's just be gentle I don't want to snap any oh it's coming out so the roots aren't damaged there but they are they are quite long so what I'm going to do is I'm going to count up one two three sets of leaves and I'm just going to pinch it out and by pinching it out means I'm just going to take the top off it 
like that and put it in. And the reason I'm going to do that is because that'll cause the sweet pea to grow bushier. So if you want bigger flowers, don't pinch them out. And that'll grow one big, long, straight stem with big flowers. If you want loads of smaller flowers, and if you're more leafy, more bushy in the plant, pinch it out. So three sets of leaves, pinch off the top, and it'll start growing outwards instead of just going upwards. That's my top tip for sweet peas. So I'm just gonna do the same again around here. We'll get this finished off and we'll have a little look around. We'll see how things are looking with all the jobs and all the bits and pieces we've been doing today. Last job of the day, I promised before, have a look around. I just remembered, I just saw these on the way past. The onions need putting out. And these are the, the red barons and this, this little grown kit. These are brilliant. And I got these from Ian at Grown Local. Again, link in the description down below. Go and have a look. They are brilliant for doing onions. And honestly, look, they just split apart like this. They're a bit stiff because this is the first time I've used them. And there's the little onions there. Yeah, look at that. The compost coming off. The compost is quite dry. I like to plant things out quite dry because if it's wet, it's all claggy. It doesn't work very well. But yeah, look at that. Just come out like that. Dead easy, no prodding your finger in like this, like I was trying to do with the sweet peas and them getting all a bit jumbled up. But we'll take them out. There we go. And we'll get some onions. And the red barons actually are the best looking onions at the moment I've done from seed. And I mentioned this, if you watch the Potty Mouth Garden Club the other night, I mentioned this. And the Rinsberger ones aren't looking very good. And I was trying to to wonder what it might be. And I know, you know, Tony Tony Smith was saying about the, he doesn't like the Melcourt Silver Grow so much, or the one that he's got at the minute. So I'm just wondering if maybe he's just had a, a dodgy batch, a bad batch of compost perhaps that hasn't quite hasn't quite worked out. So all the Rinsberger ones have had a good liquid feed. So that was was that yesterday's either yesterday or this morning. I went out and gave them all a good liquid feed. So hopefully that might see them pick up and catch up with the Red Baron because the Red Baron seem to be miles ahead. And all I'm doing, you know, just digging a hole again, much like I do with a lot of stuff. A bit of blood, fish and bone, fish, blood and bone, whatever you want to call it, in the hole, tuck it in. Jobs are good and easy as that. So I've got this whole bed to fill. I think these are probably pretty much just about, how many will I get in? One, two, three, four, five, I've got to get six there. 12, 18, 24, 18, 24, I'm not sure. We'll see how it's looking as I get on, but I'll come back to you in a few minutes. And I promise we'll have a look around at all the jobs that have been done today. I haven't quite managed to get everything done today that I wanted to, but we've got some good progress done. So let's have a look. Obelisk number one, four little sweet peas at the bottom, all tied in. The only thing I've done since I've been away is I've added some Vitax Q4, sort of multi-purpose fertilizer, plant food stuff on the top that'll break down slowly and feed those, feed those plants because sweet peas get very, very hungry. And over here, we've got the second obelisk. Hopefully you can see it from where you are. Exactly the same configuration as this one. Looks pretty much identical. What I am planning on doing is once they start growing is we'll put some crops around the outside whether we do more flowers, whether we do lettuces, whether we do something else, I don't know. I haven't quite decided yet. But let's go and have a look at what else has been going on. So just over this way, we've got the onions that I've only just put in. You can see there, they're finished. I ended up with 15, I think it was. I did think 18. I did think I might push my luck and put 24. But once I started spacing them out, I've stuck with 15 just to give them enough room. Because we all know they're going to get absolutely massive. They're going to be the most beautiful biggest, finest red barren onions you have ever seen. And let's go and have a look at the very first job we started today. And I'm already inside, I'm trying, to, trying to dodge the rain. Let me turn around, look, look. Look at the clouds up here, look what's coming our way. Anyway, hopefully we get this done before the rain comes again. And right at the back of the polytunnel here, and I can hear the rain starting. So we'll just have a look from the inside. This is the repair we've done. If you remember this, right at the start of the video, this was separated all down here. All this was torn, pretty much the length of it down to here. And we've patched it up all the way down there. Now it does look a little bit messy at the moment. Where we've used the Gorilla Glue here, it looks a bit, uh, I don't know, just a bit funny. Who knows? It'll dry out. It'll look better. The main thing is, and here, here comes the sun. We've got the rain and the sun at the same time. I'm just going to spin round so I'm not squinting at you there. The main thing is, 
we'll have the fix in the background. The main thing is it's fixed. We now don't have a massive haul and a gale force wind blowing through here. And I'll tell you what, what a difference. It is roasting in here when there's no wind and the sun's not out. I know it's, I know we're still in April, but it's boiling, it's roasting. Anyway, that's me done for today. I'll see you on the next one, folks. Bye for now.